Hello everyone, uh, Flavien Vidal with Omegazaki Motor and we're with uh, 1993 Daihatsu Atray, Atray Cruise. Uh, so typical little Kevin, uh, nothing really special about it, just a good old classic Kevin that you, you can find like, like it's fairly, it's getting harder and harder honestly to, to find them here. Uh, but uh, especially in like running conditions that's not rusted to, to death uh, like newer models are more common but uh, yeah US legal ones uh, they're not that uh, they're not that common and uh, they've all been crushed by now so to, to whenever I find a decent one uh, I usually try to buy it because it's yeah just rare anyway what about this one so uh, fairly decent mechanically very good uh, you will see that cosmetically there are some imperfections here and there uh, so let's go with the imperfections so here it's like some it's so it's not rusty here it's just a rust mark uh, over the paint this is due as you can see maybe uh, let me, as you can see due to the mount so it's not uh, it doesn't rust through it's not uh, it's not weak or anything but the door mount uh, yeah it's not uh, there's some surface rust on it that uh, that leaked on the on the paint the van being blue uh, blue yeah it's not blue uh, so the van being white uh, it, it really you really see it right away uh, concerning the paint now there's some dripping stuff so that's probably from the joints that dripped a little bit in there so it would need a really nice polish to to get its uh, original shine back but uh, overall the, the body condition is fairly good uh, like here you can see some typical loading and unloading marks on the bumper like it's when when people load things just scratch and they push that in there and it uh, it scratches on the well, on the van uh, here a little bit of dripping also from the from the mount of the stuff but really nothing it's not uh, it's not rust you see it's not uh, it's not rusty or anything just like drips from this uh, here that's one little actual rust spot but it's still it's just surface rust it's not uh, it's not deep or anything but uh, that's still something that you might want to take care of when you when you get the van uh, and I think there's another one right there up <laughs> another like a uh, surface spot uh, rust, so just like quick sanding and just some uh, some paint over to protect it would uh, would fix that. It's really really tiny. It's really not much. Uh, the bigger stuff is here. Uh, this whole panel would need to be like pulled out. So it's uh, yeah, it's not bad either. It doesn't stop you from uh, from driving it. But uh, if you look at it from from further far, you can see it's like it doesn't look as good as it could. So yeah, might be something you want to take care of. Same thing here, a little bit of a, of a mark. And for the cosmetic defect, like you, you get the yellowed lights also that we need to be to be the, like a brought back to white. Uh, just take lots of uh, lots of cleaning, not cleaning, but uh, lots of polishing, and uh, and they, they are back to normal. Uh, for the make for the like cosmetic condition that's it really uh, the van is just otherwise really nice and especially for the price you're not gonna care too much about all this you can see also the first Shizuoka Daihatsu so it comes from Shizuoka originally bought in Shizuoka at least stickers here are getting a bit old let me open all that struts are working no problem uh, side stickers are similar a bit better but uh, but similar condition not perfect uh what else yeah that's about it here like the the weather protection thing we need to be like clean in detail as you can see it's not not perfect here but uh just like yeah need a good cleanup uh maybe some uh, some sanding of the of the wipers and just some black paint over that and that would be good again again some minor scratches here but nothing too bad so overall cosmetically not the nicest one but still really good for the outside it's like for four cube and this age and at this kind of price range it's it's really pretty good uh, so now the interior the interior is actually a lot nicer uh, typical uh, shoe marks here that uh, can be probably polished out seats are really really nice the car is 117,000 kilometer confirmed uh, that's like 70 ish 75,000 miles maybe something like that up rear seats are also even nicer actually little stain here on this but uh, that's really not too much 
on that uh, on the grandpa protection uh, under there nothing special original carpet uh, that's so these are the i try branded carpets you can see it here i try same thing on the other side and it's the same color as you can see in the rear so the rear carpets are not branded i try uh, so yeah the seats can you can like so you remove yeah, let me give me that second right up you remove this pull that up here you have a little little thing here to put the seat down up here. yeah so i think you're supposed to hold i'm not sure how it works and put this and you have a bit of a flatter space uh, it's not as good as some other van some other van like they they fold under there and make it uh, completely flat in there that's not the case for this one but uh, yeah it's nice it's still it's still practical enough i mean you have lots of room you i could sleep in the back of there uh, i wouldn't be able to uh, let me check would i be able to lay down completely Up. Ah, almost i'm like yeah almost have enough space sun in my eyes and you can see the so i'm like 6'2 so you have like quite a bit of space in the back there um yeah so the roof line roof liner is not super nice but it's in one piece no not broken or anything it's got some mark here marks here and there from uh, maybe like some i don't know scratches paint stuff i'm not sure why but uh, got some marks uh, on the roof liner but nothing bad also uh, this car was never abandoned or anything it was used all the time we can look at the shack end well it's like I'm not sure what it is give me a sec up shack Oula. if you look at the shack end you've got the previous registration so here there was a discrepancy but discrepancy but it's actually a mistake from them so the um, uh, this van has a five digit odometer as you can see it shows like 17,241 right now uh, so when the sh like previous check-in was done they, they noted the correct mileage at 109,800 but when they did it back in like for four years ago almost so 2014 I guess SA 27 uh, they only recorded like 3,100 instead of 100 and 3,100 but uh, yeah, there's a, this van has been used all the time uh, not uh, never been abandoned or anything so that's that's a good thing also we have like a timing belt history let me open the up. here like is a little thing right there has been broken before it doesn't matter but uh, yeah just so you know this thing here has been broken before up to open it here really simple you've got a little lat little latch here up let me very simple and i can do it there you go up and you have engine access if the metal thing right there doesn't block uh, but anyway yeah so engine normal engine nothing special here you get to know that uh, the um, timing belt was changed just uh, what three years ago only the car had 103,829 kilometers that's SA27 here SA27 so that's we are in SA30 right now so that's uh, three years ago that was in March on March 23rd uh, so really recent maintenance recent timing belt change which is a good selling point like not something you'll have to worry for at least a decade or more because like yeah japanese car you don't don't really don't require you to 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 change the so as you can see like need really uh, precise like uh, some really really good detailing would really help that car another thing too this door eh. this door sadly the spring i guess from the from the door it does not i don't want to break it but uh, yeah it does not tip so you have to open it from inside the other side works but uh, just this side has, uh, has to be opened from the inside yeah this the mechanism doesn't does not work there so i'm not sure what is blocking but probably just getting old you know it's not uh, it's really not a new car so yeah i'll put back the seat later Hop. 
and that's gonna be it for the walk around I don't think that there's anything else to talk about I can look at the dash I don't think we've looked at it Up, dash is in good condition some cup holder or whatever there that probably doesn't hold anything for anything other than the straight line first corner everything is like basically just all over the car uh, scratches here in the middle scratches there on the on the air conditioning the air conditioning works uh, but it's not super powerful so I will ask for it to be charged again before it chips uh, that's we have everything it's still in R12 it's never been converted is in R134A so it's better we just charge it here before it leaves uh, I don't think it leaks because the, the, it's still kind of cold and the compressor works well so no, no problem there uh, and that's it you can watch as the no paint fade on the roof which is actually fairly rare the paint uh, on those cars were really really crappy you can see here like uh, you get some marks and some stuff really really quickly on those cars so uh, that there's no fade on the roof is actually pretty good radio works you've got like a position so you can if you want just the radio up. but we'll see that in the walk around so you've got just uh, contact here up and there you go that's how it starts it starts really really quickly and the air conditioning is maximum yeah really good mechanically it's really really good so anyway let's get back with the walk around of the car for oh yeah quick little thing uh, it's an old one it's an old vehicle so even if you're like for example so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do what you should not be doing shift into first first you'd have to do second and then first if you shift into first directly okay that didn't do it this time you see it scratches a little bit so yeah just to get it correctly just second first oops this one was a bit hard Hmm. Up, allez. or third yeah any gear first and then go into first uh, that, that, that just avoids uh, like uh, any any gear scratching once it's in there it's absolutely no problem up but uh, yeah just the first shift into first yeah, this time it did it well but uh, yeah uh, not to make it scratch it doesn't like to shift into first with the engine running uh, unless you rev match it perfectly I guess which would be better but uh, alright anyway let's get back with the driving this time bear it right back alright we are back with the well so oh uh, yeah I'm gonna do it again first second the frigum and then shift into first otherwise it cracks but when you're driving that's like not relevant it shifts perfectly it just uh, when the car is stopped I'm not forgetting anything uh, no, I'm not. Up. So yeah, driving it normally is absolutely not something. Okay, just when the car is stopped, you you need to do that. Up. No, that I mean third gear now at like these cars like they can be really driven at. Yeah, force is a bit pushing it. But uh, yeah, like uh, they can be really driven at uh, at really slow speed in fairly high gear uh, because uh, the, the gearing is actually mainly well geared uh, toward acceleration and not uh, not like freeway cruising or it's, it's really really short gearings all the time to, to kind of get some oomph to to the car because it doesn't have the power obviously. Uh, but uh, so what to add about this one uh, yeah suspension are actually very good let me jump here it does not jump which means the suspensions are actually good <laughs> uh, but uh, no car is very nice uh, suspension are great you have to know that the suspension on this one are not cheap we can find them but uh, the front suspension are at least uh, are, are, are really expensive uh, we had that problem with a previous uh, tries that we bought and uh, yeah, not uh, not very good uh, if you if you need to replace the suspension. Those ones are really great, so you don't need to worry about that. I think that the, the bill at the end for just for the two front strut was around like 600 bucks, 
uh, when we had to order them and that's not uh, it's not an anomaly or something or just one guy selling them for for way too much it's actually the price that they sell the struts uh, for for this car so yeah if you're gonna buy an atri make sure that the suspension are in great condition and that's the case with this one uh, so as I said yeah the air conditioning is not super cold I will ask for it to be um, just to get some new uh, a little bit of uh, freon freon r12 uh, back in there uh, that would help let me get the tip shot Sorry for the view of my underarm. <laughs> not in here. Am I in here? What the, what the hell? What do I, do? I don't know. Hop. Okay. So, usual acceleration. There's no tachometer. I'm not going to risk it too high. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, going fast with those vans is always very, very sketchy. It's, uh, it's not really made for that, but it accelerates well. The steering is not super precise, uh, but uh, but it does its job and it's uh, it's behaving like it should, which means not greatly. That's what uh, Cayman do. They, they, they are not <laughs> they do not behave greatly from the factory. Hop. Yeah, there's really absolutely no problem shifting back, even shifting back into first. On, uh, while driving, there's absolutely no synchro problem. It just when the car is stopped. Uh, yeah, when the car is stopped, it's not uh, it's not very good. Uh, yeah, as I said, radio. Did you use Instagram for um, some? Occasionally, uh, I do. I like Instagram. So yeah, for some Instagram? reason. Yeah, of course, yeah. I'm gonna We're gonna turn gonna on check the those Instagram messages. So this Instagram live then it's you guessed it or you got to I have no idea why they speak in English in this radio show. I guess it's the, the cool factor of having some random guy say some things nobody understands in this country because nobody really speaks English. Like, if there's like one or two percent of Japanese that can actually understand English. It's good but i doubt it even reaches such high numbers uh, so but uh, yeah japanese radio for some reason they have especially this radio which is called like kokomo uh, uh, yeah they, they like uh, to have some gaijin foreigners uh, speak in english during their show but uh, yeah back with the car uh, yeah there's not a lot to say really so the car is in mechanically it's really really good Brakes well, accelerates well, temperature is like slightly on the cold side. Uh, yeah, everything works. Up, boom. That is the maximum speed, just to let you know. <laughs> Do not get out in a, in a terrible storm, that's not gonna be great. Uh, yeah, rear one also work. Up, cannot see it, but I do. Uh, yeah, there's some like fog lights also and things like that. And brake is a bit loose, but it uh, it still stops the car, which is really light. So yeah, it doesn't have to be. Suspensions are, are great on this car. So the rear suspension are cheap. That's not the, that's not the thing. The, the front one are really expensive, and on this car, it's, they, they, they are good, and that's really nice. Because you don't want to receive the car and notice that you need like well, 600 bucks plus shipping uh, worth of uh, suspension as soon as it arrives, and that will not be the case with this car. I'm 
not sure what to add. Uh, I need gas. Uh, I, I'm gonna keep that car actually for for tonight. I'll go take a couple pictures in the in the city. Uh, in the city uh, somewhere, I don't know, some extra picture for Facebook and stuff like that. So so I'll get to drive it uh, a little bit more than uh, other cars because this car still has actually valid registration in Japan. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's. Not, I don't have a lot to say really. That's uh, with this kind of van, it's not uh, <laughs> not much to say. The, the fans are a little bit uh, noisy, as you can hear. I just turned it off. Uh, yeah, you just need a good detailing, really. If you if you detail the car like professionally done and everything, it's it's gonna be really nice. But uh, it just needs like a little bit of work. Uh, on that side uh, yeah um, don't have much to say yep. so as I said also when comparing with um, with like a Subaru Sembor and uh, more expensive K-Vans uh, the big difference like the engine is right under you so it's clearly the noisiest uh, kind of van that you could have uh, no vibration whatsoever on this one the engine is really well balanced sometimes it's not the case as I said like these cars are are expendable they're not even considered as like the people do not care about those old K-Vans in Japan at all uh, so they're not all the time really well maintained mechanically so if you have some vibrating engine under you uh, you're gonna feel it uh, quite a bit it's not the case at all with this one but it's still a bit noisier than, than other cars um, and other yeah and other like K vans with the engine in the rear or in the middle like, a, like Subaru Sembar which is at the rear or the, the active van which is a uh, midship but I guess that's gonna be it with the test drive really so as you can see I'm I don't know if you can see actually but uh, yeah in the middle of traffic like really it stays dead center uh, super reliable uh, Daihatsu it's basically like a Toyota technology under there so they, they, they do share a lot with uh, with Toyota Toyota which does not have K cars actually, they, that's the only Japanese company who does not offer K cars, but they, they do share some uh, some stuff with Daihatsu, so there's some uh, there's some Toyota technology under there. Okay. Up. Anyway, I uh, guess that's gonna be it for the for the test drive. I'm gonna turn on the air conditioning a little bit again because it's hot. And. Uh, well, I guess uh, we're gonna see next time what am I gonna be doing uh, so I have a few more cars to do I have like a, a Roadster like if you're a fan of Miata I have uh, the almost the, the near most uh, coveted uh, Miata uh, for sale it's a V special a very limited edition manual V special V special and Miata uh, the only more like I guess coveted version would be the M2 1001 which is like much more coveted by uh, by collectors but the V-Special is, is higher there when it comes to rare version of the roasters and I have like a, a Tommy Kera Tommy Kaila like they would uh, they would say here Kaila Kaila Tommy Kaila uh, M13 which is a uh, Nissan Micra or Nissan March here uh, that's been modified and tuned by uh, Tommy Kaila uh, I have also like uh, some weird Daihatsu Mira uh, van which is uh, not very good looking uh, it, it's an ugly it's, a, it's the ugly docking of the of a Megazaki motor right now it really looks like crap, but uh, the, the shape is really fun to, to look at. It's a uh, it's a great car, uh, good like you know it's unique, so that's that's the cool thing about it. 
but it's really ugly and you better not go out when there's wind and what else uh yeah i have a few more cars some more coming up also so yeah well till next time bye bye